What's going on everyone? LMC here. And this is going to be the Hall of Heroes Light Sylph Guide video. I don't know how helpful this is going to be because uh, honestly if you don't have the monsters you need to do this farming to get these pieces there's not too much you can do because it's a very limited time dungeon. This is only going to be available for another 50 hours from the time I'm recording this. This is Friday night. Well, actually like Saturday morning right now, just barely, for me. And, uh, well, let's talk about it. Let's see if we can't give you some tips and tricks and uh, hopefully get you farming at least B2. Well, depending on where you're at in the game, at least B1. You know, okay, so there's three different levels of this Light Sylph dungeon. I have a little bit of experience with this. This is uh, B2 that you're seeing up here. And this team that I'm using clears this in about three minutes which is pretty decent I think um, Norwegian trolls clearing it in two and two minutes and 30 seconds ish per run uh, it's not too bad so let's discuss level one it's not that difficult but for brand new players you're not gonna be able to beat level one level ones probably on a scale of one to ten is probably like about a three or four difficulty and if you don't have at least you know some five-star monsters with pretty decent runes uh, they're just gonna kill you pretty quickly uh, just keep working on your monsters and next Hall of Heroes they have this once a month next Hall of Heroes you'll be ready to do this but give it your best shot because if you can at least manual be one you know try to get those 50 pieces because this monster is really rare especially it being a four star light monster you're probably never gonna get this monster again and it's a pretty decent monster we talked about this in a video I just posted a couple days ago when we found out this was gonna be the Hall of Heroes so it's a good monster and it's definitely worth getting at least one of even if you don't plan on using this monster at least get it for your collection the light self here so B1's got a chance to give you between zero and one uh, summoning pieces. You need 50 pieces to summon this monster. So you're either going to get one or you're going to get zero. I don't, you might even be able to get two sometimes if you're really lucky. I don't know if you can or not. But it takes a lot of energy. So let's just say you're going to get like 0.7 average pieces per run. So if five energy per run, that's going to take you, what is it, five times 50. That's 250, let's just say, you know, probably about 350 runs to do this, or 350 energy just to get one piece if you're doing B1, but it's still worth it. Still do everything you can to at least get one one of these monsters. So B2 is a little bit more difficult. It's not too bad. And what I'd recommend, there's a lot of different teams that are very capable of doing this Hall of Heroes. So just take a look at what your best monsters are. And if you've been following me for quite a while now, um, you've probably watched my Giants B10 guide video, which explains a good win-based team to use. And lucky for us, that win-based survivability team is totally capable of autoing this dungeon as well, B2. So that's what I basically started doing. Um, I, I took my normal Giants B10 team, which consists of a Kasis, Amon is the healer, Shannon for the buffs, Bernard is a very good monster to take, so I took him in place of Julian and Lucian. I took Bernard and Orochi. So Orochi is actually a pretty good monster for this dungeon because he puts up all the damage over time effects, and that can help a lot with the bosses that have really high hit points. So I took the same team that I'm used to using for Giants B10 because I know it's very survivable and has 100% success rate. So once I figured out that I was doing B2 auto at 100% success rate, um, you know, I, I started adding some monsters and substituting some monsters to speed up the runs. So once you have 100% 100% success rate with your team, you know, throw up some higher hitting monsters with some heavier AOE attacks. So I took Julian and Lucian and that decreased the time for my runs quite a bit. So that's what I'd recommend doing. Take your strongest monsters, you know, there's quite a few monsters that are going to be more beneficial in this dungeon than others. Some of those are going to be your survivability monsters like Akasis, Amon, Belladon, Darien. Those monsters are all going to help your team survive. 
Um, some of the other monsters that are going to be useful are crowd control monsters. So if you have Tyron or Julian or Shannon, whoever you have despair runes on, if you have crowd control, that's going to help quite a bit as well. So there's a ton of different team possibilities. That's why this video is not going to be quite as useful for you. But let's talk about, you know, the difference between B2 and B3 is honestly quite a bit harder. And especially B3, the reason I'm not farming B3 right now is there's a mini boss. So each one of these stages consists of, each one of these levels consists of six different stages worth of monsters. So there's mini bosses on stage three of each of these levels. B2, it's not too difficult because there's really nothing in these levels that's um, really that damaging to your team. B3, on the other hand, the mini boss, the Dark Sylph in B3, does an attack that hits for like 35,000 damage. So it just annihilates, it one shots one of my characters. And with my team right here, if that Dark Sylph attacks, he's going to attack my Amon and one shot my Amon. My Amon only has about 28,000 hit points. So there's a couple ways to get around that if you want to defeat B3. So every time you defeat one of these levels, you're going to get five crystals for the first time completing it. So I suggest trying to get as far as you can, even if you know you're only going to be autoing B2. Autoing B2 or manually doing B2, you're guaranteed at least one summoning piece, and it's quite a bit faster than B3. If you have a team that consistently autos B3 fairly quickly, by all means farm B3 because you're going to be getting more summoning pieces per energy used. So that Dark Sylph can be a real bugger, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, there's a few ways to get around it. One is take a revive somebody who has a revive skill like Brienne, the Wind Death Knight, or Michelle, if you have a really good one of those. If you have a good revive monster or Water Undying, something like that, take that revive monster and then just bring the monster back to life that gets one-shotted by the Dark Self. That's a very probably the most successful strategy, the easiest strategy for autoing B3 for dungeons like this where monsters get one-shotted. I don't have a revive, mo revive monster, so I'm not doing B3. But I did get around it, and I've cleared B3, and I can successfully do that by focusing that Dark Sylph and the mini boss in Stage 3. Um, if I can focus that mini boss, and if I can get a couple stuns off, so if you have monsters that have, if you have like three crowd control monsters with despair runes, you might be able to auto it pretty successfully. That's one way to do it, or if you just have such strong six-star monsters, like some some players, but not very many of them, um, you you can probably just burst down that dark sylph before they can get an attack off. I know some people are doing that. So there's a few different ways to get around that. Um, B3 worked for me with crowd control and survivability. So if you can make sure your Casus has the shield on Amon, that's going to help quite a bit. It might not. You know, my Amon still gets bursted down, though, with this team. I can't really auto it successfully 100% of the time. Plus, it takes longer, so I'm just going to auto B2 for the rest of this duration. Now, there's a whole bunch of monsters that can you can incorporate into a team that has a, a su successful B2 run. Some of those, you know, might be Revivers, any of the monsters with survivability, AoE attacks, crowd control... You know, Konamiya is a good choice for removing some of the dots and some of the crowd control. These sylphs have a lot of attacks that um, stun. The dark sylph here can put your whole team to sleep. The fire sylph puts damage over time effects. So Konamiya removing those effects can be very powerful. There's basically, whatever your best monsters are, you know, try to use them. This, this dungeon doesn't really have any special tips or tricks, so that's why this video is really not that useful for you. Another way to get around that Dark Sylph, which I know this isn't helpful for most of the players, but those who are trying to do B3 and really struggling with it, you could do something like take Chloe. Of course, Chloe's going to give invincibility for your whole team, so if you can time that attack properly for Chloe's invincibility, 
you'll be good there. Or you could try, and I haven't done this, so don't take my word on it, but a lot of players have Light Neil, the Light Fairy here, and one of the skills for the Light Fairy, and this Light Fairy is very useful for a lot of the past Hall of Heroes, which is why I had created one, um, removes the allies' harmful effects, makes them invincible for two turns. So if you know which monster is going to get attacked by that Dark Sylph, um, you can throw up this Light Shield, and that's going to make them invincible for two turns. Now the bad thing is, is that Dark Sylph is probably going to attack a Light Monster. So if you're taking Amon as your healer, and you're taking the Light Fairy, you don't know if that Dark Sylph is going to attack Amon or the Light Fairy. You might be able to predict it. And you might be able to get away with it long enough to, you know, if you get that invincibility up, you might be able to, you know, burst down the Dark Self. So you could try something like that, but if you don't have Amon as a healer, if you're taking, um, you know, the Wind, Yeti, Rakaja as a healer, there's, there's a bunch of other healers, like Chasen or something like that. You know, then if you take the Light Fairy Neil, you can throw up the Holy Shield on Neil, and that would probably work. Don't quote me on that, it's just a possibility. If you have a really strong meal, it might be worth trying out. So, just basically the monsters that you're used to using, if you have a Giants B10 team, you should be good for B2 here. Um, and that's, that's basically about it. I don't know how helpful this video was, but I told you I would do one. So, there it is. Use your best monsters. Um, you know... As far as leader skills go, there's a lot of different monsters that are useful for this. So if you want, you know, this just works for me because Akasis is a resistance leader and I'm taking all wind monsters except for Amon. So she helps keep some of those debuffs and some of those stuns off of my monsters. So it seems to increase my my runtime or decrease my runtime quite a bit. Um, some other leaders that are really useful would be like Sigmorus or some other hit point based monsters that are going to give your whole team more hit points. If you can increase like your Amon's hit points above 35k, you could auto um, B3 if that was the case, if you had a really high hit point monster that you knew was going to get attacked. So hit point leader skills are very good, speed leader skills are very good as well for this dungeon. So resistance, hit points, speed. Those are all very viable for this dungeon. Um, one thing that Com2US screwed up on on the last patch, and I'm sure you've probably seen the pop-up, is the the Fire Vampire Vertihill. His skills are messed up right now. So he's a very capable leader right now as well. I've used him for B2, and he keeps the runs about the same speed as my Acasis here. But his skill, basically Boiling Blood, this passive, it no longer triggers so he's not increasing the attack bar of your other monsters anymore but to make up for that until COM2US patches this his um, leader skill in dungeons increases the uh, attack speed of all your monsters by 65 percent so it's kind of like an even trade-off depending on you know how well your Vertihill's ruined right now and how strong he is it might help him a little bit and it might might hurt him actually but he's, he's definitely very capable as a leader for this dungeon. Um, yeah, that's basically it. 65% increase to attack speed is huge. So try using him if you have a good Vertihill Fire Vampire. Um, and good luck, guys. I, I hope you guys can at least get one of these Light Sylphs. The Light Sylph has a... I think it's a really good monster. I'm going to use one personally. I'm going to farm as many as I can. And I think my plan is to feed a few of them to my Shemite, who's my uh, a key element to my team right now. So I, I use the Shemite in Arena all the time because of her Arena leader skill, increase the attack speed of Arena monsters. So I already use this monster, so I'm probably going to feed some of the light sylphs to her, to him, to get these skill ups. But the Light Sylph itself is a good monster. And what I'd recommend is putting Despair Runes on this monster. Now the more crowd control good 
five and six star monsters you have, the farther you're going to be able to get in Tower of Ascension. So let's see if we can't find this light self here. Where are you? Right here. So two AoE attacks. So that's going to help, you know, any monster with two AoE attacks. Despair runes are going to be really good for because it's going to have a 25% chance to stun all the monsters for these AoE attacks. Um, crowd control monsters are super important. So I have Julian and Shannon on this team here who both have despair runes who can do these stuns like you see right here, just mass stuns. And in Tower of Ascension, if you have two monsters who are really good at survivability and keeping your team alive, something like a Kasus in Amon, and then you have three crowd control monsters. So I'm going to probably do a lot of Tower of Ascension content with a Kasus, Amon, Julian, Shannon, and Eridos, because Eridos is going to be my third crowd control unit, and my Julian's going to be mostly damage. Julian, you know, does crowd control, but he's also got attack percent, so I have that planned out a little bit, and Shannon, you know, survivability as well, so she's support also, but also does stuns, and then Eridos is going to do huge stuns with these two AoE attacks, Especially the double cyclone, which attacks all enemies four times and has a 20, 10% chance to stun them each time. So very useful. I'm definitely going to use this monster. I hope Eridos isn't a, a really squishy monster, but I guess time will tell on how useful she is. Um, I hear he's a really good monster. I keep calling him a she. I do that all the time. But anyways, guys, here's the Hall of Heroes video. Hope it helped you some, gave you some uh, some ideas to get you a little bit farther and get you more of these summoning pieces. Take advantage of this and get yourself at least one. I hope everybody gets at least one. It's a uh, kind of a it's not like a once in a lifetime important kind of thing, but uh, you're not going to get the chance to summon one of these monsters. You know, probably ever again. You'll probably never get one of these again. Chances are, unless you spend a ton of money and buy a ton of light dark scrolls, uh, you, probably, you probably won't ever get one. So it's pretty cool that we have the chance to get this monster right now. And the skill ups for other sylphs is really good. All the other sylphs are good. Beretta, Tyron, and um, Shemite. They're all good sylphs to have. They're all good characters in their own way. So very useful skill ups and a good monster in his own right. So that's it for now. Hope you guys are successful in this. Use your best monsters. Go for survivability and go for crowd control. And good luck. Good luck beating B3 with that pain in the butt Dark Sylph that does the huge attacks. And that's all I got for you today. Tomorrow or uh, Sunday is going to be Mystic Scroll Fight Club. We do have 16 people signed up now. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do the first round, which will be four different matches on Sunday. And then the next week we'll do the next four matches, and then we'll move on to the semifinals. So should be fun on Twitch. Hope to see you all there. The timers are updated on freetoplaygaming.com if you're interested in when those Twitch broadcasts are going to be. And as always, I'll post the videos to YouTube. So take care for now, and Guild Wars is going to start next week, so there should be some interesting videos about that. We have some plans in our guild to make it far. And uh, we'll just see what happens. Hope you guys are having fun in the community, and happy summoning. Hope you guys have some good luck. Bye.